Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Roth from the Blazor team. In this video, we're going to take a look at Blazor's data binding support. It's pretty common that you want to be able to get the value of web UI elements like inputs and handle those values in your code. And then often you also want to then update the values of those inputs from your code. Blazor provides an easy and convenient way to do that with its data binding features. Let's take a look. All right, so here's our Blazor web app. And what I've done here is I've added a little uh, piece of markup to the counter page. I've added an input. Let's do this with some arrows. There's an input and also a button and a p tag. And what I want to do here is I want the, uh, the input value to show up down here below in this p tag. And then I also want to have this button that whenever it's clicked, the, um, the, the value of the input gets, gets cleared. So how do we do that? Well, let's see. Getting the value of the input, we've, we've seen how to do that. We can use an event handler. So let's hook the on, uh, on change event, and we'll call this uh, on change. And let's go ahead and generate an event handler for that. There we go. All right, and then in our on change event handler, we will capture the value of the um, uh, the capture the value of that input by using this event arg. So e dot value should give us that value. There we go, and that should give us the text value. Um, and then for the button, if we want it to, uh, to clear the text value when clicked, we just need to hook the on click event, and let's create an on click event handler. We'll then generate that. And then in this method, we will take the, the text uh, variable and we'll just set it to the, to the empty string so that we've, we've cleared it. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and run that and see what that currently looks like. So if I now type you know, ABC and I tab off, my on change event fired, and we were able to render the value. So we've captured it in our C sharp text field. Looks good. And then if I hit clear, well, it disappears from the rendered value before, but the input doesn't uh, update. Uh, that's because we haven't actually changed the value of the input element itself. How could we do that? Well, we could just go to the input, and it has a value attribute on it that you can set. Let's set it to the value of uh, text, right? So that when we change text to be at the empty string below in the on click event handler, that should change the input value to be the, uh, the empty string. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And so now if I type ABC and I tab away, We've got our value, and then I hit clear, and now both of them disappear. All right, cool. So I am now able to capture the value of the input into this variable, into my text variable. And then when I click clear, I'm able to change the value of the text variable, which changes the, the value of the, the input. And I've done that by creating an event handler and also setting the value manually. But there's actually a better way to do this in Blazor using data binding. Instead of setting up this, you know, double pattern, we can just get rid of all this. And instead, we're going to use the at bind razor directive attribute. Okay? And we'll just set this to be the, the text variable. We're going to bind the input, its value, to the, the value of the text variable. That means that when the input value changes, the text variable should change. When the text variable changes, the input value should now change. Okay, So we should be able to get rid of this on change event handler. That can just go away. We'll still keep our on click handler for our, our button. Okay, So let's go back to the code. It looks like it's already done that for me. Cool. All right, so now if I type ABC and I tab away, that's working, and if I hit clear, it works as before, but with a much simpler and more robust syntax. So that's how you can set up a data binding. Now, what if I want to actually bind, like, like by default, it looks like it's binding on the on change event. Like when I tabbed away, that's when the value of the text variable changed. What if I want to do that on a different event, like on, on input? Well, we can do that too. So let's go back to our input and let's say at bind, and we're going to change the event using this colon event syntax, and we'll just change the event to be on input, just like so. Okay? So if we go back to our code now, if I type ABC or ABCDE, you can see that the, the value of the text field is now updating with every keystroke, and I can still uh, clear it as before. So that's how you can change the event for a data binding. Great. Uh, lastly, another thing you can do is you can, uh, uh, if you want to run some code after the data binding has occurred, like maybe this is like a search 
text box. And after you, you've you know, typed some characters, you want it to auto search uh, some, and, and produce some results. How can you trigger that code to run after the data binding has, has occurred? Well, there's a way to do that too. We can do at bind colon after. And then here we can specify a method that we want to call. Like let's say we want to have a search method like so. And then down below, let's add a search method. So um, let's see, let's make this asynchronous. So async task of search. Okay, and what do we want to do? So I think, well, let's, let's have some, uh, like a search result string field uh, up above. And by default, this will just be, I think, just be empty. Okay, and we'll display this search result. Like uh, let's just like kind of blow the div or maybe in the div. Let's do it. Let's do it in the div. So right here. So p uh, search result search result like that. So that should display the search result below. Okay, and then in the search, let's initially update the search result to be um, searching like that. And we'll just pretend that we're actually doing a real search, you know, going to a database or making an API call. We'll then do a, like a task.delay just to make it a little more convincing, you know, two seconds. And then when we're done, we'll say that the search result is equal to, um, let's do a little string interpolation here. So found, and then we'll write random.share.next um, results. So some no random number of results, okay? Like, like so. Okay, let's see if that now works. So if we go back to our code, and if I now type ABC, searching immediately shows up, and then two seconds later, we see our, our search results show up. Okay, so now, I mean, it was a little weird, like when I typed like E, D, E, F, you know, searching, and then I think there's like, you know, three different search results that are actually being returned there, because it's doing a search after every single keystroke. Ideally, we would like uh, you know maybe wait to do the search until the, like a little delay until after the user stopped typing and then do that search. You could add like a timer and, and you know wait till the timers had a chance to, to to go for two seconds before updating the UI. But at least gives you an idea of how you can run some code after a data binding has occurred. All right, wow, we've learned a lot so far. We've learned about data binding and handling events and components and routing. Let's put it all together now and build something using all of those features. We're going to add a new page to our Blazor web app uh, to track a list of to-do items. Okay, so we're back in our Blazor web app and we want to add a new page. So let's go to our components pages folder and we'll go ahead and click on the new page button and let's add another Razor component. We'll call this one to-do like so. Great, there's our new to-do component, and we're going to give this component a route. We'll put the at page razor directive at the top, and we'll specify the route as slash to-do. Looks good. Now, I want this page to show up in the layout along with the other pages in the, in the nav menu. So let's go into the layout uh, folder and find the nav menu component, and I'm just going to copy one of the existing links and replicate that. And we'll just update it so that it now links to to-do and that the text says to-do. Okay, and let's make sure that we're still running. We are. And then let's go ahead and see what that looks like in the web app. It looks good. So we have our new to-do tab. We can click on it, and there's our to-do page. Awesome. All right, so let's add some content now to that to-do page. Uh, first, let's add a class. Uh, this is going to be a to-do item class that I'm going to use to track individual to-dos. And it's going to have a couple of properties on it. So public string title, like so. And then it's also going to have a Boolean is done property so that we know if this to do item has been done or not. All right, great. Uh, now let's uh, have some state in our component. We want to track that list of to do. So let's create a list of to do items, just like that. We'll call this to do's. And we're going to new it up and just have an empty to-do list for our starters. Okay. Well, now uh, let's render the list of to-dos up above. So I'm going to create an unordered list. Right. And then in here, let's switch over to C sharp and do a for each. And we'll go over each to-do in to-dos. And then inside our for each loop, we'll switch back to HTML and we'll render individual list items. And for starters, we'll just render the to do title 
like that. Okay. Now, if we save that, that should hot reload in, and it did, but we still don't see anything, and that's because we don't have any to-dos yet. We need a way to add some to-dos. So let's add a way to add some to-dos. Let's add an input down here at the bottom, and then let's also add a button for adding to-dos. Add to-do, just like that. Okay, now I want to add an on-click handler to my add to do button and we'll call this on let's, well, let's call it add to do that's more descript descriptive all right and then let's generate that event handler cool looks good there's our new event handler now what do we want to do in here well we need to be able to add uh, the a new to do item based on whatever the user types in this input so i'm going to add a string field string new to do like that and let's just move it up to be empty initially. And then we're going to use those data binding skills. We at bind our input to the new to do, just like that. Okay, so now whatever's in the input should be bound to this string variable. And then when we click the add button, we can just say, well, if we have, if um, you know, string that is. Uh, null or let's do a null or white space. If it's you know, if it's not if they didn't type anything. We don't want to add it to do for just a blank string. So, uh, so it's not null or type uh, or white space. The new to do, then we can add it. So let's take uh, our to do list and we will add a new to do item. And in this to do item, we'll set the title to be our new to do, just like like that. Okay, and then we should probably clear out the new to-do field to be empty again, just like so. Two-way data binding, so we can update the field, it should update the, the input as well. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, and restart the app so that those changes can apply. And let's see if that works. So now we go back to the app. Okay, we've got a, our input. I don't know, eat. Oh, it's not working yet. Why is it not working? Well, the reason why it's not working is because this page is not yet interactive. Now, we haven't talked a lot about this yet. You may have noticed this when we were working on the, the counter page, that there was this um, render mode directive up at the top that's making the counter component uh, interactive. We're using interactive server. We need that in order to be able to handle UI events from within our to-do page component. We'll talk more about that in a, in a future video, but for now, let's just go ahead and add that missing render directive right at the top. And we'll make sure that that gets applied to the to the app. And then now let's see, can we add some to do? So eat, yes. Okay, drink, you know, sleep. Sleep is good. Great. Okay, so it's working. So we're able to add to dos. Data binding is working. Um, let's. We need some. I mean, there's no check boxes. To do lists have to have check boxes, right? So let's add a check box. Uh, let's go and do uh, instead of just rendering the title. Let's add a couple of inputs here. The first one will be of type checkbox, which is like a Boolean value, right? And so we want to bind the value of this checkbox to the current to do's is done property. We haven't seen this before, but here we're using like a whole C sharp expression instead of just like a single value in our data binding expression. That's totally fine. That's totally cool. You can do that. And then maybe we'll also data bind the, uh, the actual title too, so you can change the title of the, the to-do. So we'll just have a text, text box, and we will bind that to to-do.title, just like so, okay? So if we save that, Donut Watch is telling me it needs to restart, that's fine. Okay, so now if I say eat and sleep, We've got check boxes, text, uh, uh, yeah, check boxes that we can check, and we can edit this and say, you know, shower instead of eat or whatever. And supposedly that's all data binding, but how can we tell? Well, let's let's count the number of to dos that we don't have done yet and display that somewhere on the page. So let's do it right up here in the title. I'm just going to add some parens. That's just content, but inside the parens, I'm going to take our to dos and let's count. The number of to-dos. Well, this has got like a lambda where we take the you know take a to-do and we check like is it not done? Is t dot is done false? Then we want to count it, right? Count our unfinished to-dos. All right, let's save that. Let that hot reload in. Aha! And so now at the top we can have this little counter that if we check all the check boxes we have zero to-dos to do. If we add some more like um, 
uh, I don't know, learn Blazor. Then now we have a, an, undone, an undone to do. So that's that's how we were able to use all those features together. You know, event handling, data binding, routing, layouts to build a simple to-do list application.